Welcome to Makosi Network. Welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about our beloved KZ Chiefs and our not so good coach Kevin Johnson. And what Kevin Johnson said in saying Guti Yena, he doesn't know what else to do to get Chiefs to score. He's even considering taking them to a shooting range where they're gonna grab guns and try shoot. And that's what Kevin Johnson has said. Has said. And I laughed at this because I'm like, Kevin Johnson has basically told South Africa. And all football that he cannot solve Kaiser Chiefs problems. He has come out to basically say Chiefs has problems that mean I can't solve. And we are keeping quiet and acting like it's normal. But anyway, please like, comment and subscribe. And join the channel, guys. Join, subscribe is most important. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you enjoy the content of this channel. But let's get to it. Kevin Johnson comes out and blatantly says, yeah, nah. he has he has no answers to how to get Chiefs to score goals. So he has no answers in how to get Chiefs to start winning. He's like, there's nothing he can do, basically. And it's funny for me because when a coach gets to a point where they say something like this, you realize that they've run out of like ideas and there's there's no more hope for him. So... It's sad that we're carrying on with him. If he's saying he's run out of ideas, why are we continuing to use him for the rest of the season? Because my problem, my biggest problem with KZ is in this current, with the remaining games, is that we're using these games as if they are not important. For me, these games are very important, guys. I feel like these last six games, we should be playing the young boys we should be playing the squad that we want to see next season. Not There's no point in us playing the players we don't expect to see next season. So if Siteba is not going to be signing a new contra contract with Kaiser Chiefs, why are we playing him? Why would we put Siteba in the field if he's no longer going to be at Chiefs for the next season? If Gonzalez is no more going to be at Kaiser Chiefs in the next season, why is Gonzalez on the bench? He's wasting his space. If... A player like Clanti is not going to be renewed. Why is he still playing? Why don't we play Happy Machian? Like at this point, we're losing the wrong way. We're losing the wrong way. And when I say losing the wrong way, a lot of you are going to be like, what does this guy mean, losing the wrong way? I'm saying, rather lose with the players you believe in that are the future of KZ Chiefs than losing with the players who don't care about KZ Chiefs. They leave in KZ Chiefs. They, give, they don't give a red... Uh, bam bam like i can't even like tell you what it means it's like if it's you if you work for a company né? if you work for a company and then you tell the company i'm resigning uh, at the end of april i'm i'm resigning at the end of april can we all agree that that person who said is resigning at the end of april today 22nd of april that guy in his mind, he's no more working for that company. He's checked out. Minority, he won't be arriving at work super early, trying to finish work like a mad person. He's just going to be like, I mean, I'm just going gonna, gonna to clock in and clock out. I'm going to do what I have to do, but I'm not going to put in energy. But then Tina, as Kaiser Chiefs, we want to play that person who has clocked out as our player. Does it make sense? Look at how hungry Fundo Villagazi was when he came on in the game. Look at how hungry Du Shabalala is when he's in the game. Look, we can say whatever we want to say about Duba, but he plays with good heart. Uh, Samkelo Zwane, we know he's the only one who I feel like currently he's having a mental block. But he also needs to be given a run, like play him, give him the confidence, you know, show trust in him. And that is what's needed, you know. That is definitely what's needed for for KZ Chiefs. So that is my biggest worry about KZ Chiefs right now. Is that wh why do we always do this? Why, why do we always take the worst route to fixing KZ Chiefs? I say this because I'll continue by saying this. I'll continue by saying this. That I don't like, I don't like how everything is turning out. It is very poor. It's distasteful. It, it just feels like our management doesn't care. Like, guys, let me put it, let me make it simple for you. Let's take Kevin Johnson and send him back. If these guys don't want to bring in uh, Arthur Zwane because they feel like it, it makes them look like they're incompetent, it's fine. It's fine. But bringing like um, 
Tiri so literally uh, nyane the under seventeen coach because Vela is not there right now. Bring in Tiri so at least you know do something different. Don't we can't be and give Tiri so uh, a mandate that try finish top eight, but your main aim is to try play the youngsters. Let's see what how many youngsters we can get in the right place as best as possible. That's what we need to do as um Kaiser Chiefs. And then yeah, let's get to the ratings for the day. The ratings for the game. Voma, he's being beaten in the past three games. He's not been beaten like with difficult shots. Like the balls are passing right by him, you know. So it's a very disappointing. I know a lot of people are going to be like, ah, it wasn't Voma, it was the goal, it was the defenders. And yes, it is the defenders' fault. But I will still say this Testagen, um, Thibaut Courtois. Um, who else? All these keepers, Allison and all these guys. The shot that Bovuma conceded yesterday, these guys get all the time in English Premiership. They get it all the time in La Liga. It is a standard that teams are going to get the ball on target and it's going to be a good opportunity. That's what separates the very good goalkeepers from the just above average goalkeepers. In that Bovuma's goal that he conceded yesterday, I can all tell you that he was not um on his toes because he dived but he didn't move. I I'm sure we all saw that. Like he was diving but he basically didn't dive to the right. He just dived. He just fell down. That is basically what happened. So Vuma for that I'm going to give him a 4. I didn't like that because that was the only thing Richards Bay did. Actually even a 4 is too much. 3 because that's the only thing that Richards Bay did really. Um the next one is Slanty. Slanty I'm going to give a 3. It doesn't didn't really contribute to the game. It, uh, yeah, yesterday it wasn't even about the Richards Bay attacking us. It's just that he just didn't add any value. He had so much space on the left, but it didn't add value. Three, Msimango Dove. They did fairly well, but they didn't have much chances except for that header that um went in. But I still complain about set pieces. All of our center, all of our tall players, Msimango Dove, Shanti. When we are attacking, I don't get why they don't practice set pieces. Right back, uh, Solomon. Solomon's had a decent performance. I'm going to give him 6.5. He actually defended well. And he defended well when Richards Bay was overloading his side. A lot of the times he would find himself two against one. But he would make a plan because Mtetwa and and um Siteba would always arrive late and they wouldn't support him. And we know Saile is always late. So it was interesting to see that a lot of people are uh, were attacking Solomons, but Solomons actually did pretty well in my book. Mtetwa <sighs> Mtetwa does well in terms of defending and passing the ball. It's when he gets the ball. But a part of me said I actually enjoyed Mtetwa's performance in this game because you need to understand his role. When I say understand his role, he's not meant to be the most creative player. He's meant to just play it simple. He's meant to just be the guy who who stops play for other teams and the guy who just passes our players who are more creative than him. But because Chiefs has been so poor and they play with like um players who aren't at at the right level right now, you you force sit um Tetra to start doing things that don't fit his game. So he, you force him to try to be creative. You force him to try to take shots from range and all of those things. And he doesn't even practice those things on a day-to-day. So when he finds himself there in, in a game, it's just because he has that much heart that he's trying to find himself in those spaces. So I'm going to give a 5.5 5 to 6 because it's not to say he didn't have a bad game. He actually stopped a lot of Richards Bay attacks and he passed the right people. It's just that a lot of you are expecting Nteto to all of a second Sunday be um Yeye Litsulunyane. Whereas he is not Yeye Litsulunyane. He is actually our Katsand. That is what you need to understand. Nteto is our Katsand. His job is to protect the back four and just to ensure that he distributes the passes. Sitebe, one of his worst performances for Chiefs. He had one good through pass for Dupree that Dupree messed up. But other than that, he didn't really have a good game. Maybe not his worst performance, but not a good game. So maybe 4.5 to 5, somewhere there. Uh, the next one is going to be Mdushabalam. Mdushabalala, because of his runs, etc., I'm going to give him a 6. Mdushabalala 
this game was a game where he should have got a 7.5 if he put the ball in the back of the net that is all he had to do put the ball in the back of the net and he was gonna get man of the match and 7.5 but because he missed crucial chances he's gonna get a six and then the next one will be um Sail. Sail started the game well but then he just disappeared at some point so he started very very well i liked what he was doing when he started but at some point the guy just vanished in the game so Saile, i'm just gonna give a five uh, dupree missed another chance again one-on-one -on -one with the keeper um dupree is hard work no result so i'm gonna give him a five i i like i, I can't we can't keep sugarcoating we can't keep praising dupree's hard work but his quality lets him down. At some point, we just have to give him a bad rating. And this is the day where I'm just going to give him 5 or 4.5. Uh, Modi, Modi, I'm going to give a 2. Modi was not meant to even be in this game. The fact that he appeared in the starting lineup, I don't even know how. But yeah, Modi, I'm going to give a 2. And then... A special mention to Mfundo Villagazi. Mfundo Villagazi, I'm going to give a 6. When he joined the the boys, the boy was taking on players and the team started playing. Meaning Gutumfundo Villagazi identified a problem and he went to go solve the problem. He's not this guy who just fits into how Chiefs was playing. He did, he changed how Chiefs was playing. So Chiefs was playing where Modi would get the ball, be scared to ch challenge someone, be scared to dribble, turn and pass the ball back. Umfundo Villagas got the ball and was ready to always take on players. And the funny thing about this is that Umfundo Villagas in this game was not even playing in his most comfortable position because he's also like Umdusha Bala. They like playing more on the inside so like an eight etc or if you have a coach like um pep guardiola or a coach like rulani mukwena you can play him on the right side like a right wing like about david silva like about folding etc if they play like that positionless game but or generally on the right side you can do that but because she doesn't have that kind of intelligent coaching it's difficult for you to play positionless wing uh, positions like that so that is Kaiser Chiefs and that is what we're dealing with as a Kaiser Chiefs nation. Our team is really poor, but yeah, I don't know what more we can say about that. Kaiser Chiefs is just nonsense, NJ. I don't even know what more to say. And what Kevin Johnson's comments was, are telling us is that there's not much that's going to happen for Kaiser Chiefs. I'm a cause for life.